My name is Jamari Hall, and this is my ID. Additionally, I'll be playing the role of a U.S. representative that favors the Rio Grande River boundary in my Unit 7 presentation. The year is now 1845, and Texas has finally decided to join us as the 20th state on July 4th. There hasn't been anything but conflict between our government and the Mexican government. They think that the Nueces River marks the border between Texas and Mexico. However, my map of the 28th state of Texas clearly shows that it is the Rio Grande River. Right here, we have our border, the Rio Grande River, and over here is the Nueces River. So this chart illustrates where the Mexicans believe the boundary to be, but they're mistaken. The Rio Grande River is here, and the Nueces River is here and there is a 150 mile difference. And as you can see, the Mexicans tried to extend their borders past the Grand River to the Nueces River. Although Native Americans still live along the Nueces Strip, Nueces, the Nueces River is shorter than the Grand River, meaning that the Grand River is more valuable. The year is now 1846. After General Zachary Taylor forces were slaughtered north of the Rio Grande River, we are officially at war with Mexico. In other words, we had soldiers slain on our own soil. However, this is not how Mexico sees it. If we defeat Mexico, the border can be positioned correctly at the Grand River without any mishaps. 1848. We prevailed, conquered Mexico City, and signed the Treaty of the Guadalupe Hidalgo. We have given additional land west of Texas in addition to the Rio Grande River, which serves as the southern boundary in the United States. Our country has access to vital waterways and space for agricultural production after acquiring the territories between the Nueces and the Grand River. As you can see on this map, all the ones hard bowl outlined are the, one, are the territories that we gained from the Guadalupe Hidalgo. And this concludes my presentation.